So 10th edition 40k is going to bring some major changes to stratagems and command points. Let's talk through some challenges of one of the more controversial areas of 40k rules and how 10th edition aims to address them. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics where recently we've been covering the rollout of 40k 10th edition, huge changes to a whole bunch of different areas of the 40k rules and today I thought we'd take a focused look at what we know about stratagems from the new edition starting out with how they've been progressing and their development over 8th and 9th, and then talking about the changes and how they might impact things. So stratagems in 40k as they stand were introduced in 8th edition, previously they just weren't a thing. For the most part I felt like they were fairly well received when they came out. Each army gets a new resource called command points, and you could spend the resource on a fair few different things, upgrading warlords and characters with extra relics and warlord traits, but in particular basically amping up certain units with kind of off the board assets. Say for example having a space marine squad crack out their all-spec scans to intercept incoming enemy reserves. Or say a bunch of orc knobs using their Gretchen friends and allies as little more than human shields against incoming enemy fire. I feel like when they were done well stratagems are really quite cool. Representing specific fighting styles or war gear options. Adds a bunch of cinematic set pieces that your units might just do once or twice per game. And also gives you a different resource to manage and some genuine creativity as to how you use your command points to further your army's ends. I felt like the command point reroll as well is also a fairly good bit of game design. It was a bit weirdly de-restricted at the start of 8th and you could use it on all sorts of things that you probably shouldn't. Like rolls to determine the mission and things which probably wasn't intentional. But once they got that sort of thing under control I think it's quite nice. It basically is a bit of a ward against extreme bad luck. Generally it's most powerful when you roll a particularly bad result that was very likely to succeed. And it's kind of satisfying for players to be able to access as it means that they can just try and hammer home the exact things that they need to most for their army to function. And have just a little bit of control against the whims of the dice gods, even if it is going to cost you resources that you could spend elsewhere. The way that command points have been generated has changed a fair bit throughout 8th and 9th. I feel like they did kind of well to refine their system between the two editions. Previously in 8th we had detachments generating command points, so the idea would be to try and fill as many loyal 32 Imperial Guard detachments as you could and put them alongside your Imperial armies, which I must admit was a bit weird and maybe didn't feel like it was very on a level playing field compared with more elite armies. I think it was quite good in 9th edition when they flipped the mentality of that on its head, now detachments would cost CP, barring the core ones like battalions and patrols and things. Again, being a bit of a push towards more balanced formations, involving a fair few troops and HQs. You could still feel basically exactly which units you wanted, but you'd have to take some detachments that cost more CP. So you basically have the trade-off of having the exact units that you want, or being able to do more cool things with them. They also changed command points to be generating throughout the game, rather than just a flat resource that you got all at the start. Again, I think that was a very solid refinement. It just means that you're not just dumping all the command points into big wombo combo alpha strikes right at the start. It means that they're a bit more meaningful into the late game when often they might not have been. Finally, Arcs of Omen late in 9th edition split command points from force organisation. Basically, all armies would just get the same. And it would be relied on other things to make sure that people wanted to feel balanced forces, the way that the missions work with objectives secured and the way that it made sense for units to be supporting each other, and it does seem that we haven't seen any enormous reversion to skew lists since then. In general, I must admit I do like the overall idea of stratagems, though for multiple reasons they aren't exactly the most popular part of current Warhammer 40k right now. I feel like you'd see very few people who don't think that they could be improved. Perhaps the single biggest issue with them is just how many of them there are in the game. Each faction gets 30 or more. And a whole bunch of those stratagems are either rarely or never used. The fact that there's so many and they want them all to be relevant often means that they're just put into very niche situations. And there's almost always going to be some that stick out far far better that can be reliably used compared with some of the ones that might come up once in a blue moon and often get forgotten about when they do. The 30 or more that you often get in codexes can often just be the start as well. You can get extra ones from things like Armies of Renown, plus sub-faction specific ones, particularly in the Space Marine Codex or the Chaos Legions. And as Games Workshop have certainly been pointing out throughout the 10th edition rollout, they can be kind of annoying to reference in-game, leafing through multiple pages of them and trying to find the exact one that you know can apply in this situation. Never mind the difficulty of your opponent keeping track of these interactions. With that in mind, another big criticism of 9th edition stratagems are gotcha moments. With 30 or more stratagems per faction, it's basically impossible to keep track of all of them. You might know a few of the major ones for each army that you regularly fight against, 
but unless you go out and read through each and every codex, you're not going to know the rarer ones, and that's quite a big driver in people misplaying things due to a lack of information. Just about every stratagem could potentially be a source of this. Even flat damage and durability boosts could cause it. Say, if you charge a unit into an enemy one, and then all of a sudden they pull out a really powerful defensive stratagem, then your unit might just get killed in return. And if you'd known about it in advance, then you might well not have done that action. Perhaps the most painful ones might be kind of reactive mechanics, which seem to be a thing in 10th. Things like intercept rules when enemy reserves come down and then just blast them away with a nearby unit unless your opponent knew that you had that strat. Or perhaps surprise heroic intervention, jumping into combat when your opponent's nearby to you. Some units can do it unexpectedly, and again that can be a massive deal and cause your opponent to play differently if they'd known it existed. Finally, and perhaps a minor bugbear to some at least, is that some stratagems just have a bit of a weird feel to them. While a fair few of them are kind of cinematic, things like Orspet Scan, Grot Shields, or even maybe some battle tactic ones like Wisdom of the Ancients with the Dreadnought guiding your firepower, I feel like a few of them just seem kind of random when they're activated. Say for example a Space Marine Transhuman Physiology, for some reason some of your Space Marines arbitrarily get a whole load tougher than others, even though generally they're all made of the same stuff. It just feels that representing the Space Marine's toughness might be a bit better on their datasheet, at least in terms of a cinematic point of view. That brings us to the new 10th edition system though, and I genuinely was wondering whether or not stratagems might even survive into 10th. I feel like with cutting down so many mechanics and with a bigger sort of negative press, stratagems might have been for the axe. Lots of people like them, but a lot of people really aren't fans as well. In general from the wider community, I got the impression that the broad sentiment was that they're kind of okay, but the system is far too bloated and needs slimming down and rethinking, and that really does seem to be what they've gone for. I'd say perhaps out of the changes, the four biggest ones is that there's going to be fewer of them, and they're going to be easy to have in front of you. Command point generation is going to be changed, with fewer CP available in general. The stratagems all have a new and quite fancy looking layout, which I think will make them a bit more legible and easier to pass. And finally, in place of a whole bunch of stratagem rules, a whole ton of abilities are going to be put on the unit datasheets, so just things in their ability section rather than things that are elsewhere in the book that might crop up from time to time. First up out of those, in 10th edition we actually know how many stratagems each faction is going to be able to access. Rather than usually somewhere around the 35 to 50 mark, it looks like each army in the game is going to be rounded down to 18 that they can have in play on the table, though 12 of those are going to be core ones that will be known to all the armies. Currently we've got 8 of the things, though a few of them really are quite niche, like the one that does mortal wounds when an enemy falls back. It doesn't usually make sense to use that one. My guess would be that we'll probably keep the command point re-roll and the interrupting in the fight phase one. Overwatch seems pretty likely to stay, but it's going to be interesting to see what other generic options we get. So far we've only seen that rapid ingress one, which admittedly is kind of interesting to potentially have some counterplay and reserves arriving in your opponent's turn. And I sort of suspect that smoke launchers might well be another one. We have still seen the smoke keyword on things like rhinos. I'm not sure it really makes sense to have one of the six stratagems for a whole bunch of detachments just be a smoke launcher one. I feel like consolidating that one into a core one would be kind of sensible. I guess it's possible that we might see a few other common generic ones like some sort of intercept stratagem or maybe a fights and death one potentially winding up in the core section but I guess we'll wait and see on that part. Then we've got six detachment specific stratagems, initially it's going to be just six per faction, and then I guess we'll see a lot more to be added per each army. As Games Workshop starts to release more codexes, and we actually start to have the armies have more than one detachment each. I feel like such a pared down list of stratagems does seem pretty nice to be honest. As I keep saying, they will be easier to reference as they'll all be on one page. It means that when you're talking through army abilities at the start of the game, your opponent can actually have the chance to familiarise them with any that they aren't sure of. Something that's just realistically not practical when you've got 30 plus stratagems, you're not going to talk through every single one just as you're setting up armies. Then these stratagems will be changing if you swap out the detachment for a different one, so it means that you won't be stacking stratagems on stratagems with sub-factions and armies of renown and things. It will be kind of interesting that it will mean that several different forces between different factions will play very very differently. Stratagems can have a pretty major impact. Overall, I think that this will be a vast improvement compared with the previous system. A huge reduction in mental load, as players will all get familiar with the 12 core ones at least relatively quickly. And then enemy ones should be clearly visible through the game, should cut down on gotcha moments. I feel like from Games Workshop's point of view as well, with only having a few produced per detachment, they can actually have a really good think about getting these ones right. 
Rather than having to make a whole 30 of them more or less good enough and have a load of them be neat, they can really focus on all six of these being meaningful, fairly common to want to play, and somewhat impactful when you do use them. I feel like the World Eater stratagems from late 9th were quite a good example of that, basically an early look at the new system, but there weren't really any of those that I thought I'd basically never ever use. Next up, and the area that we don't know fully about yet, is Command Point Generation. Currently for our latest edition of 40k in Arcs of Omen, each faction starts on 6 CP at 2000 point games, then generates 1 per each player's command phase, all the way up to 16 command points over the total course of the game. On top of that though, realistically, really quite a lot of armies have ways to get extra ones or to farm them somehow, say regenerating command points on a 5 plus or something. Games Workshop haven't given us the entire mechanic of this yet, but they did say that command points in general have been greatly reduced from how many you'll have access to now. Stratagems are just going to be a smaller part of Warhammer 40k in general, and my guess would probably be that they'll have reduced the amount of command points that you start with even further. Maybe only have a very few to start with, or maybe just one or two, and then continue to generate them over the course of the game, just to make sure that everyone doesn't spend all their CP in the early turns, as it would often make sense to, to gain early swings in the start of 8th. I strongly suspect that they won't be part of army construction anymore. We don't even have any detachments that you could have to pay CP for now, so it seems like that'll be out for that. We don't know fully about the Warlord trait style enhancement type things yet though. I guess it's not impossible that that could be command point links, but it did just sound like they said that they'd be getting up to three of these choices per army, and there was no indication that you had to pay points for them now. I guess there'll just be a general perk of taking along some non-special characters. Again, it feels like further restrictions like this are probably going to reduce the overall amount of stratagem bloat, and it perhaps could even allow for Games Workshop to be a little bit more generous with what stratagems actually do to impact the game. If you've got less of them, then each one could maybe be a tiny bit more powerful, and it wouldn't be too much. Next up, we've got some slightly redesigned appearances of stratagems, and I feel like this one's been a change that's gone down really quite well. I really do quite like the redesigned look of them. On the left hand side we've got some handy phase icons now to show which part of the turn they're going to be used in. That armour of contempt one for the space marines is usable either in the shooting or fight phase. And that rapid ingress one looks like it's usable in the enemy movement phase. I kind of wonder if the colouring of them might even represent whether they're used in your or your opponent's turns. Perhaps even more than that I feel like the layout of when they used the target of the stratagem, the effect and restrictions is all really nice. I feel like those broken down sections are definitely going to stop people misreading them or trying to play them when they can't. Plus it might also just help out Games Workshop writing them a little bit if they have to fill out each of these sections every time they make a stratagem. They're a bit less likely to write one out that doesn't have an off clause or isn't particularly clear whether you can use it in your turn or your opponent's turn. It does still seem that things like battle tactics and strategic ploys and other classes of stratagems are going to be useful somehow. They still seem to be here. I guess they maybe help to differentiate them in people's minds, though in general I feel like these categories have had kind of niche use within 40k, perhaps a little bit more relevant for Crusade. I suppose occasionally it does come up when certain characters get to use a certain class of stratagem for free once. Still though, I feel like that class might be a little bit extraneous for a lot of units. Finally, as to where all these stratagems are going, Games Workshop have been putting a whole load of abilities and things on datasheets, things that might have otherwise been stratagems in a new edition of the game. It seems that one of the design tenets of 10th edition is that just about every unit gets some sort of unique special rule that allows it to operate a bit differently. So far we've had things like Terminators getting boosted damage with Oath of Moment, Turbigants moving reactively, getting a bit of movement when the enemy draws near, Space Marine Rhinos self-repairing, and a few things that are teased to be new abilities, like Repulsors allowing a Marine unit to jump back inside them when they get charged, or Eldar Falcon Grav Tanks allowing reroll wounds if they target the same unit as their disembarking contents does. I guess for unit specific things it's pretty handy to have the actual rules listed on the datasheet as well. Maybe some of these might have been stratagems in previous editions of the game, but some of them might have been more standard abilities. It does look like a lot of the rules density is going to be going into these individual special rules though. Overall seems fairly sensible, again keeps more rules actually with the units as opposed to in different sections of a codex. I must admit though, these rules being farmed out to datasheets does make me wonder whether or not things like gotcha moments are actually going to be any less common in 10th edition than 9th. It does seem that in 10th edition, Games Workshop wants to have a whole lot more emphasis on out of phase actions in the opponent's turn, trying to keep both players engaged. I feel like these are the sort of things that could really trip opposing players up if they weren't expecting them. I guess enemy stratagems are going to be a little bit easier to keep track of with that, 
But if there's a whole bunch of reactionary abilities on data sheets, things like repulsors being able to scoop up marine squads again, or turbulence moving out of sequence, that again could make just for a lot of people making mistakes and not realising that that data sheet had that powerful rule on it that would happen in an unexpected time. I'd guess that these are going to be at least a little bit more visible than they were before if you've got data sheets out and in play. But if you're not actually taking time out to read through all the data sheets in the enemy army, then I still feel like these rules perhaps have just as much potential to surprise. I feel like maybe 10th edition might still start with a bit of a conversation. If you're playing an army that you're not familiar with, maybe it might be kind of sensible to ask if they've got any reaction type mechanics. Things like out of sequence moving or shooting that might happen during your turn, and you wouldn't know about it until you trigger it unless you literally read through all their data sheets. Beyond that, it just feels like gotcha moments might be just as bad if not worse in 10th, just because these abilities are going to trigger at pretty random times and in response to your army doing actions that might not necessarily be intuitive. Overall though, I'm definitely pretty positive about the changes to stratagems from 9th to 10th. I think they'll go down pretty well with the player base and just improve clarity and understanding in 40k in general rather than having tons of effectively hidden rules throughout the game. Let me know your thoughts though. What do you make to these changes, and what are your hopes and fears for how Games Workshop realises these once we find them out in full? If you've enjoyed the video and you'd like to see more like this, I'll certainly be aiming to keep up the videos around 40k 10th edition, I do tend to have new ones coming out just about every day. And finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked down in the video description. Channel patrons do get a few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.